mammal, which appears again in groups. And here it comes to the output stage. Yes. And now I will introduce our stage three, which is the output and the application. Uh, before we start this output stage, we will first introduce the story plot of Finding Nemo, which can ensure that every student in the class knows the flow of the story. And the story plot, which is, uh, which is taken from the textbook, and we make some modification of it. Uh, for, uh, for us, it is a good thing because we can, uh, using corpus along with the textbook, it will be more authentic to us. And before, uh, after we state the uh, story plot of the Finding Nemo, we will deconstruct the plot with different scenes, which can help students to catch up the story. What, uh, what does it mean by deconstructing the plot? Is that you can see that there are different, uh, different sentences, different clauses in these short paragraph, and we can deconstruct it with uh, along with the like the plot of the story like this is the first part of the story and this is the second part and this is the climax of the story which suit the task next and for the part uh, for the part one of the output thing we will do it in a group work which uh, mainly focus on the speaking part we will form groups of five students and we will assign each with a number like student one two three four five and each of the students will have a scenario card. Each student need to read the scenario card and complete the speech bubble and the photo caption by uh, using the ED or ING adjectives. Uh, because our students are not very bright students, so we will provide a table for them to help them like to use these words. But if they are confident with their own words, we are welcome. And for the last part, we will share the ideas in the group. Okay, let me show you the scenario card now. Okay, uh, we will have different scenario card here, which it which suits the plot of the story. So, uh, they are cohe they are coherent. Okay, f like this one. First of all, they need to fill in the speech bubble, like this one. Everyone is sleeping, no one plays with me, I am. So they need to fill, fill in with ED adjective, of course. And after that, they need to think more about scenes one is, like interesting, boring. So basically, this one is using the ED adjective and this one is using the ING adjectives. Like what I mentioned before, they can use the table, or if they want to use some word new, they can look up the dictionary or they can ask their group mates. Or of course they can search through the corpus as well. Okay, and after, after they have the presentation in group, they will have a very short voting, like which one can imitate the, the sound best and which one got the very uh, neat and tidy word of their speaking. And next, we will write a short, some, a short theme review, which is an individual work which focus on their writing skills. <clears throat> and in this part, um, we will provide a sample, sample, a sample theme review of the Frozen. Like, I was touched because Anna gave up her life to save her sister Elsa. It is very touching, as well as the name. A diff at, at last and in here we will have some reminder to tell them what to write in this short film review and we will give them a blank a like filling in the blank and we will remind them to write down the uh, the name of the film and how they feel and be why they feel in this way and the last part they need to uh, write with an ing, uh, ing adjectives as well. Okay, for for us, we didn't design the homework for them, but to consolidate their knowledge or their understanding, teacher can ask the student to write another short within of their own favorite Disney theme instead of something we've already provided to them. And of course, after this task, we can stack it on a board. And like uh, the 
like stick it on a board and put it in the school hall, which suits our main context from the very beginning. This the this leafing week. Okay, and that's it for our presentation. Thank you. Demonstrate too much oh. mm. for them to read. You mean the uh, instruction? To, yeah, I mean, mm. how to, how how do you make this uh, a design worksheet more user friendly? Oh, mm. okay. We will orally do it, but this is the like a lesson plan, so we put everything up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's make fine. sure every I single. I mean, you have to specify. Mm. If you want to do the orally, mm. you see, you can give some teachers know. Okay. 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 Do okay. Orally. okay. Otherwise, maybe you can, uh, you know, follow what the other groups have done. To design some, uh, you know, uh, small mm. exercise, you know. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. like teacher center like teacher clicking the button for the corpus but not student doing this is it a problem because they don't have the chance to really have the yeah, teachers came to mm. the, uh, mm. speak out for mm. this so actually students can do some observation right oh. mm. so i mean we can make the research right there mm. okay. so i think actually they're doing something mm. Mm. make sure that they're following the, the instruction okay mm. okay well, I think we have to, you know, as teachers, we need to speak, right? Mm. Mm. Teach the instructions, right? Mm. Or we don't need to always label it as teacher center. Mm. <laughs> okay. Mm. 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 Okay. Right. Thank you. Do, do we need to really give them chance to search it online by their own instead of us showing them? I think it really depends, uh, you know, mm. how much time you are, uh, you know, uh, it's available, right? Mm. I know whether they have access to uh, uh, a laptop or, you know, an iPad, you know. Mm. Mm. If, if, okay. if you don't have this equipment, I think you just can't. Mm. Okay. But maybe you can show them afterwards how to mm. search mm. online, you know, mm. so they can make use of this tools. Mm. 
Okay. In this stage or in the later stage? In this stage, right? Do you think you have uh, time to deal with the children? Yeah, I in this yeah, lesson? Maybe. maybe mm. at the end of the lesson. Yeah, maybe mm. at the end. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, good, e good evening, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're good. Good night. I'm Thomas, and she's Charlene, and she's Christy, and we are working on the two phrases on the contrary and uh, on the other hand. So uh, this is uh, the reason why we work on these two phrases because, like, secondary students are encouraged to write, uh, I mean, to write more complex tests by using a variety of connectives. And uh, these two are actually the two that students always uh, mix up. Uh, if you have practiced, uh, I mean, if you have done some practice in the LPAT writing exercise. And as well, uh, some, uh, as you can see in this uh, picture, is actually from the Lawman NSS textbook. And they don't really uh, provide explanations on the differences between the similar connectives. So we would like to help students to make things clearer. So this is uh, some background information of our lesson plan. So our target students are senior secondary students. And the corpus used is uh, a corpus concordance English. And it will take around 120 minutes, which is two classes, yeah. So we follow the uh, MUT, the module unit task uh, structure from the EDB. So the module will be learning English through social issues and the unit will be knowing about uh, Asperger syndrome and the task. And the final task will be writing a speech about the Asperger classmates. So these are our objectives. So at the end of the lesson, students will be able to distinguish the meaning uh, the differences in terms of the meaning of, uh, on the contrary and on the other hand, and they will be able to use it uh, in their writing and use a, a corpus as a tool for uh, inductive and self-directed uh, learning. So um, we did a little uh, modification uh, to the framework of, uh, because uh, it's basically we uh, exchange the second and the third step because we think the um, examples in the corpus are maybe a little uh, difficult for senior secondary students. So we did the search uh, for them. Yeah. So we will start introducing the steps. So for the third step, which we want students to detect knowledge gap, um, it is basically a, an activity that we provide for students. So uh, we want to uh, provide a context for them so that they can have a basic understanding